years, but now it's just on camera. There's this myth that the police just started killing us two, three, four years ago. They've been killing us for a long, long, long time. And um, personally, I hope this is the last, the last protest that I do for something like this. I say that because I hope no more of our babies, no more of our mothers, no more of our fathers, no more of our sons, our people, no more get harmed by the police. I know that's wishful thinking, but damn it, I just want it to stop. They kill us over nothing just because we're colored. Black, brown, red, they want us all in jail or dead. This has been happening for 500 years, a half a millennium. That's a long time. Because of both the social and political climates, the, per the persecution of colored people has gotten worse in recent years. That is a fact. The stats back that up. The fact remains that we have, we have to fight this. No one is going to help us. But as tough as that sounds, that's actually okay. Because we can come together as oppressed peoples and end this. We have the numbers. Women, even white women, are oppressed in this country. Women alone account for half, half of the population in the United States. Not to mention not all men are straight, which means oppressed people in this country outnumber the privileged. We can do this. We just need to get on the same page. And get on the same page in solidarity with one another. And stop fighting each other. And start fighting with each other. Fighting the same oppressor. It's the single oppressor. The United States. The criminal justice system. This system, it's one entity. They may have a bunch of branches off of it, but it's the same tree. We can do this and we need to do this for our own survival. We can learn from each other's oppressive states and how our experiences can help one another and in turn take the system down. It tears me apart to know how little this nation and this system thinks of us. Native people are still having their land stolen. They're still having their water poisoned and being physically attacked for, for standing up and fighting for their land and their own water. This is happening in North Dakota right now. And in this city of Los Angeles, a person is killed, it seems like every five seconds. But that has got to stop and we're the only ones who can stop it. Jesse Romero was 14 years old, 14 years old. The cops ended his life. Daniel Thompson and Azil Ford weren't even 30, but that did not stop the cops from murdering them either. Personally, I'm not for police reform. I'm for a complete uproot. That's just my opinion. Because America's police departments are far too infested for reform to solve the problem. However, until a total teardown is possible, we need to hold these killer cops responsible and force the departments to give their cops better training. I always say that the cops are well trained in the area of learning how to harm people of color. They're very well trained at that. But you could say the same for dis disabled people as well, especially disabled people of color. Both Danelle and Azil suffered from learning disabilities, and the cops' impatience with them cost both Danelle and Azil their lives. Cops are just like politicians in this country. They have, the, they have no intention of helping people of color, only hurting us. But until that day comes when we successfully bring down the, bring the system to its knees, we have to hold anyone and everyone with that type of power accountable and responsible for their actions. What makes these situations tougher to deal with is, is when the people that we are losing are good people. Jesse, Jesse was good people. Azil was good people. Danelle was good people. And let me say this, they are good people because although their physical form may be gone, 
Their spirits are still here. They are still here. Their spirits push us not to give up the fight for liberation. They are our ancestors now. One of the toughest things about being colored in this country is that we too often lose our, uh, our young ones. But even then, they guide us from here and from above. The blood they spilled is now gasoline on the fire. The fire to continue to push for liberation for all oppressed people in this country. I know Jesse's mother is mourning right now and I, I lost my mother when I was eight to cancer but I cannot imagine losing someone that early in their life to a gunshot and a murder. And all your prayers, all your good thoughts send it to Jesse's family. But I still think Jesse should be rep represented here. And these are the words of Teresa Dominguez, Jesse's mother. Jesse was a very good student. He was a very good person. And what's so ridiculous about these situations is most of the time, or almost all the time, when a cop kills one of us, they lie about it. They lied about it with Jesse. They lied about it with Danelle. They lied about it with Zeal. And one of them was a child. 14-year-old child. A witness said that Jesse did not fire a weapon or shoot a gun. But that was a cop's excuse for killing. Witnesses don't matter, evidence doesn't matter. Only the gunshot from a police officer's holster matters. A campus aide at Jesse's school described Jesse like this. He was a bright, smart kid. To see, to see him, to see him go like this, I never expected this. A neighbor of Jesse said he didn't even look like he was 13, which was 14 or the thug that the police described him as. We tried reaching out to the family of Janelle Thompson, but understandably they are laying low. But I'd just like to describe a little bit about Janelle. He was a gentle soul. He was a little shy and went by the nickname Lil Bo Peep. He loved the Los Angeles Lakers, he loved Michael Jackson, and he loved playing Uno. Now that's a, that's a pretty relatable dude right there. Because I don't know any of us who doesn't like to rock out to Michael Jackson or play Uno. And maybe I should put on some Billy Jean the next time I play Uno with my homies. That's a pretty good idea, Danelle. Thank you very much. The police and this system will continue and will come up with any and every kind of made-up excuse to kill us and our children. Azia wasn't answering the police quickly enough. Danelle was a carjacker. Jesse was a violent gang member. All police fabricated lies to justify the murders of Jesse, Danelle, and Azil. And again, and again, it hurts so darn much seeing this once, let alone over and over and over and over with absolutely no sign of it stopping. But we can stop it. We can stop it. Our ancestors of the past set this up for us. It may have taken 50 years for the movement to get reignited, but we're back here again. We can finish this off. We just have to get on the same page. If we get on the same page, then we can really do some damage. And we've done, what's happened in the last few years is amazing. What Black Lives Matter have done, after those tragedies, such as Michael Brown and Trayvon, unbelievable. But we need more solidarity all, all across the board because more people than not are oppressed in the United States of America. And I think all human beings are equal. Sexes, genders, races, doesn't make a difference. I just truly believe we should get on the same page 
so we could bring this thing down and have everybody live equally in this country, like the myths states that we already do. But I'd like to bring up a brother named Leroy, who came all the way over here from uh, Oakland, California. Let's give it up for Leroy.